Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here as the recording of the Saturday, the 14th of May, 2022. I'm standing here next to these beautiful flowers. But it's a little bit of a illusion because I'm really in the concrete jungle here in Burbank. Actually, I don't even know what the name of this place. No, this is the uh, the Empire Center right here. The Empire Center, yeah. Roscoe Soul Train. Cheers, everybody. I was gonna say in the house, but we're not inside. No. Does it make a lot of sense to drink a piping hot caffeinated beverage when it's 96 degrees here in the valley? Yeah, it's a hot one. Is Burbank still the valley? Uh, yeah, it's the valley. It's technically the valley. I have no game plan today. We have not hung out in a long time. No. So I said, let's get together. And we're just gonna go around Burbank and maybe some of the surrounding valley areas and see some stuff. Yeah, we decided we wanted to start here at the a men's warehouse, but unfortunately, all the men have gone home. They've gone home. To sleep well. <laughs> they, they're, they're in another warehouse somewhere. Everything else here is open though. There's yeah. a Walmart, there's a Target. In fact, when I lived in Hollywood years ago, I realized this was the closest Walmart. Very few Walmarts in Southern California. It's more of a Target demographic. It sure is. But weirdly enough, the largest Ikea in the entire world is right across the street from us. I bought a lot of furniture from my Hollywood apartment there that I no longer have in my possession. The apartment and the furniture. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? Yeah. Now just about a block from where we were, you see the truck going by, you also see these rocks here, but then you see the massive mountains over there. Speed limit, five mile. Where do you think that speed limit sign is for, I mean, you can't drive through the wall. No, it's for running, you know, in case you're like running over here, uh, you just gotta keep it under five miles an hour. There's so you can just, just jog at five? Yeah. Now supposedly, over here at this pet shelter, animal shelter, there is a Hollywood pet walk of fame. I don't know where it is, but I'm gonna guess it's probably next to the building. Oh it's yeah, only, right here. It's only like a block from where we just were. They even got a fire hydrant right there for you in case you need to relieve yourself. It is. <laughs> now I do know a lot of Hollywood animals, but I probably don't know all these. So in 55, there was Gypsy, which was a horse, Sam, which was a dog, Jackie, which was a lion. None of those are ringing a bell for me. No, none of them. Now they're, oh, Francis the mule. What was that? I thought I knew who the mule was, but now that I'm thinking about it, I don't. No, rhubarb, born in 52, or maybe passed on in 52, was a cat. That's a good name for, for a cat. Oh, here's the shaggy dog, right here. The shaggy dog. Now, I don't think they're laid to rest here. I think this is just a, a walk of fame. Here's Benji, right here, Benji. Of course, everyone knows Benji. Pea Wacket? Is it pea or pie? Pie Wacket. Pie Wacket was a cat. Spike was a dog, Samantha was a goose, and then there's Wildfire, which was a dog. The only one I really know is the Shaggy Dog and Benji. Are those the two most famous kind of old-time Hollywood dogs? There's got to be a viewer that's going to know all of the, every single one of these animals. I have no idea. You think someone will know Samantha the Goose? Oh yeah. Most famous goose in history. All right. In my car now, driving around, I never realized that here on the corner of Verdugo is Lincoln Park. There's Honest Abe right there. Abraham Lincoln. Did you know that there was an Abraham Lincoln bust in Burbank? No. For a second, I thought it was Abraham Lincoln. From Wayne's World? Yeah. I like them teeny and toasty. Just keeping up with the theme of things I've never seen in this area. I'm pretty familiar. There's, there's little picnic tables over there with butterfly wings. I'm pretty familiar with this area, but there's some stuff I did not realize existed. Right here past this foliage is a memorial to the one and only king of late night, Johnny Carson. Put here by the city of Burbank Park and Recreation Department. So this is another thing. Did you know about this? No, man, I had no idea. You know, and I, I'm not really crazy about Johnny Carson. I was much more of a, an Ed McMahon fan. Really? Yeah, he always had that like kind of like lovable grandpa vibe that like, okay. just really gets me going. Yes! You <laughs> are correct, sir. Yeah, I always wanted to be on Star Search too. I, I didn't, I was trying to figure out a talent, but I, I, I don't know, still working on it. 
I say when I imitate McMahon, I'm really imitating Phil Hartman yeah. as McMahon. Yeah. You are correct, sir. I personally like Johnny Carson. I don't think there's another late night host like him. I think he was the king. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not the only person that thinks that because right here it says dedicated to the king, not of rock and roll, not Elvis, but to late night, Johnny Carson. I got a question for the people watching this video. Oh, you're going to talk to the viewers? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So if Johnny Carson is the king of late night, yes. who would be the prince of late night? It's not Fallon. No. No. <laughs> I don't I don't know who that would be. I was going to say Conan O'Brien, but Conan's, Conan's no longer on late night. I'm going to say it's Jimmy Kimmel. I wouldn't say Kimmel. <laughs> who are some of the other ones you got? James Corden, is yeah, that his James name? Corden, yeah. And then you got Leno, who's no longer in Late Night. Well, does, and it, what about, is Letterman doing anything anymore? I think he does, like, show, he does right? like stand up. Letterman was great. He was great. I would, I would consider Letterman, in my opinion, Letterman would be the prince of Late Night, personally. I loved him. Is I, there an age bracket for a prince? No, definitely not. A prince could be any age. Prince, yeah. I've been to his 60s. And Prince, the artist formerly known as, he did some late night appearances. So that just puts everything into a complete spiral. Now driving over kind of near, not the backside of water, but the backside of the Disney Studios, i throw that in because it's a Disney reference, but if you've ever seen the John Carpenter classic Halloween, they did a kind of a pickup moment here where the car's driving down this road and they're talking about Ben Tramer, Lori and her friend. And you can see this. This isn't the exact angle, but this is the spot. And it's just right next to, you just follow this road and you end up right at the Disney Studios. Also where Mickey Mouse Park was going to be, which is more or less Disneyland, but then it moved to, they decided to put it in Orange County and not up here towards LA. And just to show, so that little concrete part there that is notable in the movie, see up there the tippy top. Walt Disney Company has a little horror film correlation. Michael Myers. Hey, I ended up parking my car back there and walking up to the Disney Studios. I want to show the Imagineer building because there's a correlation with where I live in Celebration, Florida and the architect that built the building. We're not going to be able to get on property, but we'll be able to kind of see it from the, from the road. And from this angle, you can see the water tower over there too, so kind of peeking out. That just shows the distance that I've walked. And fun fact, this is the only place that you can see a partner statue. Now, we're not, we don't have access to, to here today, but there is a partner statue over there that you can get a photo with, not in front of a castle. There's Walt and Mickey. You can't really see M Mickey. Walt is obscuring Mickey, but let me zoom in. pretty neat. So if we were allowed in there, which we do not have credentials to get in today, we'll be able to go up and stand next to Walt and Mickey and say, thanks for the memories. I was going to try to do a Mickey. Can you do Mickey? Oh, is that better? Oh. <laughs> Wait, who was that? Oh. Uh, let's see. How do I do a Mickey? Is Start off with an oh boy. Oh boy. There you go. Yeah, and then go into something else. Uh, you know, my mind just goes to dark places. About the oh boy? Just no, just in general, like whenever I, when everybody's like, "Hey, you should uh, do this," my mind always goes to just dirty, nasty, raw, um, fun. You whenever know? you see the partner statue, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. It's kind of like so when I do an Arnold, I have to start off with a "That's right, yeah. come on," that's, and then I can go into it. Is I can't that Arnold? just "That's right, come on, come on, do it, come I, here." I always thought that was the German in Venice that, that you were doing. That's true. German in yeah. Venice has a pretty good Arnold. Whoa. He's, yeah, German in Venice. That's right. We had, we had an Arnold off once where him and I got together and we did Arnold in a video together for like a minute straight. He he has a better German accent than I do because he's German. He is German, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. So he has the upper hand on that. You're not German? No. But this is what I want to show. You see the dwarfs up there holding the building. This was built by famous architect Michael Graves. Not the singer of the Misfits. You know, Danzig was the singer of Misfits, but also Michael Graves was as well. But an architect with the same name, known in the structural stability building world 
And interesting fact, he also not only built this building with the dwarfs, but also the post office where I live. And the the uh, the Florida the, the in Walt Disney World, the uh, swan and the the dolphin. The dolphin. That's right. He built the swan and dolphin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like how are you doing charades? Are you doing charades? Swan and dolphin. <laughs> So every time I'm walking down Market Street at Celebration to get a coffee like this, I am standing next to a piece piece of Michael Graves, just like I am here. So I wanted to show that. Not the one from the Misfits, though. Not the one from not not the singer from the Misfits. Different Michael Graves. And from that point, just going to walk one block down here to where Mickey Mouse Park originally was going to be. Just looking at these houses, kind of a nice neighborhood right here. If I had to guess, I'd say a million and a half starting on these houses. Or more. Or more, yeah, okay. or more. Now, if this, was in a, if this was in the Midwest, this house would probably be about $300,000. But this is not the Midwest. No, this is right next to Disney Studios. And it's in Burbank. And it's weird, because you wouldn't think that literally right across the street is the studio. Yeah, it's just right here. Right here. Welcome to Hollywood. And this is the spot. I've been here before, but just real quick, like, wanted to show this is before the freeway was put in and before the animation building. But right over here was going to be what is now known as Disneyland, which is another 30 miles south of here. Imagine if the city would have let Walt have the park here. It was the city that said, no, we don't want that here. Wow. And they probably, now they're probably thinking, and that was a bad decision. We probably should have said, build it. And they will come. It's like Field of Dreams. Kevin Costner, baby. Yeah. Also located in Burbank, I'm kind of having flashbacks to my 2015, late 2015. You know who Tom Green is, right? Yeah, I know Tom Green. I love Tom Green. Back in the early MTV days, back when he was on public access in Canada. But he was a rapper. He also did rap. Yeah. And then he started doing like van dwelling stuff recently in the last mm -hmm. few years. I think he moved back to Canada. Yep. However, in 2015, he would always post online, this is when I moved to Orange County, and he would say, hey, anyone that wants to meet me, come up to the, this place here in Burbank and you can meet me. So I came up here and met him. We became acquaintances and I was on his web, I was on his WebVision show, which has since been, it's no, you can't find it on the internet anywhere. I don't know whatever happened to it. But I was on the show and I also would go and sit in the audience with Andy Dick one time. Who's the, the girl who did all the, who did LA Inc? Oh, Kat Von D? Kat Von D, mm -hmm. met her. And it all stemmed from meeting Tom right here at the Donut Prince. Don't get a divorce, get a donut. Right, that was one of the famous things that he'd, al he'd always show. And as we were passing by here, you said, we've already got a theme going on princes. Yeah, prince. So let's get a, let's get a donut at the Donut Prince. That's not, I don't want to get a divorce. No, we can't. Not yet. <laughs> oh, who, what was the band that sang Two Princes? And Little Miss Can't Be oh, Wrong. that was, um, that was, uh, don't you? Uh, that it's was, been a uh, whole lot easier since the You Know What left town. They had a, they it's had been a whole a, lot happier without her face around. They had a, a lefty bassist, too. I remember that guy. Didn't he not screaming Cheetah Willies. No, definitely not. What was it the name was of that the, band? Uh, it was not the Traveling Wilburys. No? No, that was, no, it was, um, the... But that song, it's been a whole lot easier since the, the B left town. He got a divorce, the singer of that group. I don't, I'm drawing a blank on that. Yeah, Little Miss Can't Be Wrong. Little Miss, Little Miss, Little Miss, Little Miss Can't Be Wrong. And take a look right there. There's Tom Green right there inside here and Tom Hanks inside here as well. I always love this place, kind of how like old timey it looks. Yeah, this brings back a lot of memories, just kind of hanging around over here. Yeah, this just, wow, it still looks the same. Just to show some perspective of where we're standing right now, the Hollywood side is on the other side of Griffith Park over there. In fact, that antenna that you can see is the back side of the Hollywood side. So Hollywood proper is on the other side of that building. Did you get a donut? I did get a donut, but you know what? You're forgetting something because the Hollywood sign, yeah, yeah, everybody knows about that. 
But you know what? I like how you're just like, yeah, 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 whatever. Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, whatever. The Talleyrand across the street since 1959. Yeah. That is a classic American diner that only the best of the best here in Hollywood go to or Burbank, wherever we're at. Have a shabbat about. But yeah, I go there sometimes. It is a. Uh, the Talleyrand. Yeah, it's great. I, I love it. I've never been. So give me some notable names who have eaten inside there. Uh, you know, John Smith, not the Mormon John Smith, but the other John Smith. We also have uh, Hector From uh, Pocahontas? Sanchez. Yeah, from Pocahontas, Hector. Do you think Tarantino uh, ever ate in there? He's a big diner guy. I, I guarantee that Tarantino ate there, especially because we're right down the street also from the Safari Inn, yes. which I don't know if you guys know this, yes. but the Safari Inn was in that one movie, Shabba Dabba Boop Bop Bop Bop, with... Um, the Tarantino Charlotte movie that he wrote. Yeah, he didn't direct it. He, he didn't direct it, but it's, about, it's, it's my favorite Tarantino uh, work, even though he wrote it, he didn't direct really? it. You know who directed it? It the, was uh, Batman. The same guy who directed Top Gun. Yes, Schumacher, right? No. No, 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 Tony Scott. Yeah. That's and right up here is Nickelodeon. There used to be two Nickelodeons. One was over in Hollywood proper, Nickelodeon on Sunset, but now I believe this is the only Nickelodeon building that still exists. And supposedly the time capsule that used to be at Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando is somewhere in there. I don't know if that's true or not, or just a rumor, but that's what they say. And cannot visit Burbank without going by the Wonder Years house, which is right up this road. Still looks the same all these years later. They're playing football out here in the yard. I've been by this house a few times over the course of my life. Just brings back memories of them standing in the yard, that opening credit sequence. The Winnie's house was across the road. Pretty cool. And the brother, who's kind of the bullyish brother. Wayne. He was in Back to the Future. Yeah, he was. In the dinner scene. Which is another tie-in because there's a Back to the Future location at the end of this road too. Is it really? Oh, yes. If you go to the end of that street, one block over, McCambridge Park here in the city of Burbank, once again, is where the, where the auditions, the band auditions for Back to the Future was. I haven't been to this spot in quite a while. Right here inside this building, the Huey Lewis scene. Yeah. You know what Huey Lewis said? I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. And thankfully, it's open. There are people playing basketball in here. The door was open. This is the spot right here. It looks a little bit different, but Jennifer Parker was over here. This is awesome. Oh, you gotta go there. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, we're the pinheads. These doors still look the same. That's awesome. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. Next group, please. Can we have the next group, please? Isn't that awesome? You're one of the pinheads. <laughs> Pretty cool. And over there, they used to have a mural painted, but Huey and the other judges were right here, more or less. You know, more or less. Classic truck alert. Look at that. Vintage car wash sign too. Always open 24 seven. Except they're closed. The building is shuttered. Yeah, I like how that says always open. Yeah, definitely not. But not open. And waiting at the light here on Val Prita Street, there's a plane up there. Yeah, Victory, Victory, we're next to Victory Boulevard. Okay, but is that, is that like, that's a sign, that's not an old real plane. I can't tell from this distance. It's not an old plane, but across the street from us too is West Coast Customs. We might be closed today. West Coast Customs. Yes. I went ahead and just found a parking spot. We're gonna walk over here. This is the shipping and receiving entrance. Is that TV show even still on? It's not, but they're still very successful. So they still do custom cars as TV shows, just not yeah, on anymore. and a lot of times they'll have a lot of their cars parked right here. 
So they'll have like two cool cars parked here. They have a lot of cool stuff in the window. You can't really see too much. But... Yeah, you can kind of see in the window there, the classic car alert. It looks like a... It looks like there's a... It looks like there's like a ride vehicle in there too. Kind of like a... Like an Autopia. Whoa. Yeah, that's for Six Flags, West Coast Racers. They must have designed the ride vehicle for that. That's interesting. I've heard that's pretty good. I haven't been on it yet, but it's like a new attraction out of Six Flags. And this was an unintentional tie-in. Yeah. I did not mean to show, I did not know we were gonna see a DeLorean while over at West Coast Customs in Burbank, because we just went by a Back to the Future filming location, which was not planned. We were just in the same general area. Most of this is just completely unplanned today. But this is a good tie-in. I think that has a flux capacitor. It's not time machined out, so it might not. No, but it's classy, man. This is a good one. That's cool. You don't get these kind of mountains in Florida at all. I definitely like the mountains in Southern California. And this says this is an awful lot of cough syrup. You know what that means? Uh, no, I'm wondering if it's like a memorial for their friend or or something. I, it's got to be. It's got to have something. I don't know. Yeah. I like the bolts though that they have fastened to the building. It's pretty cool. Nice little touch. And right across from that airplane that I was showing from the light. Now made it over to technically North Hollywood now. Just outside Burbank, but same general area. Noticing this mural here in this alleyway. This night. Silver night. Silver night? I think so. Look at this boarded up. I don't remember bars being on these windows. St sticking with the BGTF theme. And look at this bear. Oh, there's a hand going through the bear's mouth. And then the sword is getting kind of tossed up in the air. And here's two lovers about to embrace each other by the lips. And this is the side of Circus Liquors, which is a famous, has a clown out front. Yeah, this is the backside of Circus Liquors. Not the backside of water. No. The backside of circus. This is where, this is where the fun stuff happens back here. Man. Used in a lot of movies. The one I can really think of, Clueless, where she walks past circus liquors. I think a few other ones, but the Clueless definitely is the one that really comes to mind. They have liquor, they have an ATM, they have lotto. And here's a painting of the famous sign right here. And that famous sign is kind of peeking above Hello, waving next to the clown. I like him. Whoa, oh, someone just tried to crank the car that was already started. Another painting over here on this side as well. This is on the corner of Vyland and Burbank Ave. They also sell kegs of beer. They show right here. I am a non-drinker, but I am. If, they probably sell something other than you know just alcohol and booze and that. I got us something, man. Did you get something? Yeah, I did. I got us both something. You're brown bagging it? Yeah, why not? When in Rome, or when in North Hollywood, you know you got a party. You're starting early. You're pounding it back before the sun goes down. It's okay. It's just not. It's not alcoholic. What is it? It's, it's liquid. Man. Oh, okay. it's it's water. It's water. It's yeah. mountain water. Is that what's yeah. in the bag too? Yeah, it's the green one. The green. What is that? It's That's severed, severed lime. Severed lime. Yeah. And what's this one? That's just regular mountain water from the mountains. All right. Good. I'm gonna do Cheers. it. Hold on, I gotta pop this open. I'm having a hard time. Here, hold this. Yep. This was a whole bit that we did. I'm sure people probably realized <laughs> that this was all set up and we went and bought these beforehand. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Right, let's get this in here. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers it. Let's try to get that in there. Oh yeah, get the in there. Cheers. I totally expect this to taste like something else and not water. I'm a sucker for branding. I love this stuff. Does it have a little more flavor than the regular water does? This has got like three grams of sugar, so you can definitely taste a little sweetness. Very good. And they also have merchandise, t-shirts, 
which yeah. we got down here. Show off the merchandise. So they finally, they have like the old school ones that where they have like the little tiny logo here and on the back it's blasted, but they just put these out right now and they have the, the iconic logo on the front. I, I love these, these are cool. I am more of a front t-shirt design guy than a back t-shirt design. Yeah, me too. A lot of, it's starting to get kind of trendy where people put stuff on the back. Well, yeah, it's, I prefer it's it on of, the front. It's come back, it's, it's full circle, everything. Now. <laughs> some of these random days are the funnest with no plan i can't believe someone tried to open my car door yeah man north hollywood brother magnolia made it over now to the corner of vineland ave and peach grove street peach grove street is right there there's a place i wanted to check out for a long time that has I don't know what you'd call it, like a beer barrel in front of it? A uh, whiskey barrel. A whiskey barrel, yeah. but behind the whiskey barrel, it's down here past the Peach Grove Street sign, they have a almost like a life-size reproduction of the Bulldog Cafe from the Rocketeer that used to sit at Disney MGM Studios way back in the day. I don't know if it's the real one. I'm going to imagine they probably did not bring it and take the hike cross-country. But they probably built one, so whoever owns the place here next to Mark's Paint and the Odyssey video sign down there, I gotta check that out. And on the way over, you said you had a story about Mark's Paint. I was looking for a place called Eddie Brandt's Saturday Matinee, which we thought was this place. And the reason why we thought it was Mark's Paint was because there's all these movie posters in the window here. There is? Yeah, oh, okay. Right Okay, now I'm seeing it. There's Pinhead, yeah, Wild, Wild Things. Things. Well, that's the sequel to Wild Things. The Muppets Wizard of Oz. It's all, it's, it's really, they're all random and they've been up here for a while. But what was weird is that we thought it was a video store. It's not. It's actually a paint store, Mark's Paints, and they supply all the paints for all the movie studios. Oh. So on the inside of here, there's, you can't see it, and unfortunately they're closed, but there's scripts all over the walls. And also, they have these little tags that are from all of the golf carts that run around the studios. So on the inside, there's all these little tags for like Back to the Future, The Terminator, you name it. They're really? all in here, yeah. And one time, because I was so excited that we were that we found this place, they took me in the back and they showed me a sign from the show Sons of Anarchy. All right, I'm about to walk in, and I've never been inside here before, but I would imagine the Bulldog Cafe is in the back, so you're gonna walk through this, and then they go into like a little courtyard area where the Bulldog Cafe sits in the back. You can't really see the Bulldog Cafe from the road, so it's kind of hidden. You would never know this is back here. You know, my my early 90s, late 80s. Touchstone Pictures at Disney MGM Studios Heart is very happy that the Bulldog Cafe exists in some form in Southern California, in North Hollywood, close to Burbank area, give or take. So it's pretty, pretty exciting that the Bulldog Cafe is still around. A little Rocketeer throwback. It's a deep cut. I don't know if many people remember the Bulldog Cafe, but some might. I do. You remember it, I remember it. And maybe a, a baker's dozen of others, including the people that own Idle Hour. Awesome. And decided to stick around and get a bite to eat here as well. They had a few different appetizers. A spicy fried broccoli, a steamed broccoli, a spicy broccoli. No, not broccoli. Cauliflower. What am I saying? Bro cauliflower. All kind of looks the same. Cauliflower. <laughs> and then also a chili. Loaded. Loaded chili tater tots. Give me some of your tots. Yeah. As well. 
And then as far as the, the full meal, we both got the same kind of burger, which is like a double burger with Big. the works with the works on it. So good. Yeah, and it would basically as we're sitting here, you can see the Bulldog Cafe just over our shoulder there, the Bulldog Cafe, which is pretty cool. And once again, the Bulldog Cafe is very well hidden behind the keg here. Odyssey. You think there's anything in the Odyssey video window? No. Nothing in there? Nothing. Well, where's the other video store you were talking about? Right down this way here. Let's go down there and look at it. Oh, right there. It says North Hollywood. It's just down the block. And this is the corner. Peach Grove Street and Vineland Ave. Well, if you want to rent not videos, but if you want to rent moving supplies, this was the Eddie Branch place? Eddie Branch Saturday Matinee. It was an old video store. It had been around for years and years and years. It was very special. You could find basically any kind of old movie that you wanted to find here. There was two dudes that worked here that were very, you know, big into old movies. Yeah. But yeah, now it's a new wall place. How sad. And just one block over, this is kind of like a little storybook style house. I don't know if anyone lives here though. No, it looks like it's kind of abandoned. It's got all these little lavender kisses all over it. Pretty neat looking. There's a lot of these storybook houses around LA. Drove a couple miles over to Studio City now. I am standing next to the hand car wash because there is a hand. Now this is just a mural version of it. But there's a couple places through here that no longer exist in LA, like DuPars. DuPars is gone. It's gone. Used in Valley Girl. What else was it used in? I don't know, but I met Boogie the Boogie Nights. All that at DuPars. You did what? I met the owner once. You met the owner of DuPars? Yeah. Yeah. There is still one over by CBS, so maybe that is the one by CBS. But the one over in North Hollywood area is gone. So I think this one is gone. There's, there's only one DuPars left, but the ones that were used in those movies, gone. Studio City. This isn't too far from Universal. Studios, the hand car wash. Did this place close down? All right. It's a good place as any to do the outro. That's going to do it for today with Roscoe Soul Train. I have I, a sticker. You have a sticker? Yeah, look at that. Very nice. I always wanted to ask you, Dukes of ha are you into Dukes of Hazard? Is that what you got the name or just a clever? Uh, I used to play a lot of bass guitar and a lot of funk and soul bass guitar. Okay, so, so my friends soul. called me Soul Train, and my family always called me Roscoe. Okay. So it, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah, it made sense. It wasn't just something I made up like two years yeah. ago because I thought it was a funny moniker. I mean, I think of the Dukes. Obviously. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, sure absolutely. you probably, probably get that all and the time. I, I grew up with the Dukes of Hazard because I'm a child. Who of the did 80s. it? Yeah. Was it the it 80s or the 70s? It was, well, I, so I was watching it when it was in syndication in the 80s. Exactly. So to me, it was a. I'm, I'm also a big 80s guy. Pink Cadillac. Oh, look at the sun glaring that's off a, that's of it. That's a pink Corvette. That's a pink Cor that's a Corvette? I think so. Could be wrong on that. But is I that a Corvette? Corvette? This is like a roadside relic right here. Yeah, it used to be a lot taller too, but apparently Studio City got mad. Oh, because? Said, Chop it down. The hand had longer fingers. Interesting. Oh, the Hollywood Bowl celebrating 100 years, according to that sign. You know, if the hand, if the hand car wash was open, I could get my car I get my car detailed. Sure could, by hand. By hand. Not a big hand though, a small hand. Or maybe that's, big hands. That's a lot bigger hand than I have. But not like I mean, giant you, got big, you got big hands. I do have big hands. Let me see how it matches up to these fingers. Yeah, so when you get closer, you realize my hand does not, you know, not the magnitude nah. of what it should be, but it's like this. Me, yes, me, me neither. the grass. I have small hands, They're very small, small hands. Here. You know the same about a guy with small hands, right? Uh, didn't Austin Powers say something about that? I'll see you in the next video. Whoa, you're like shadow. There you are. There you go. You want to do the vlog over? Uh, the vlog is over. Nailed it. Was it in the car? Is that my car? It is your car. No, it's not my car. Somebody's door checking again. Someone else's door checking. The door check. You know what I just realized? The hand is holding a sponge. That's a sponge right there. It's a square, square sponge too. It is full of soapy bubbles. Mm. That's thick thumb too. Next time I hold a sponge, I'm gonna hold it just like that on the tips of my finger. Okay, after a little Columbo-like research skills, 
noticing the standing water here. This place is still open. It's just closed for the day. It's already six after 6 p.m. This hose right here, 